Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God to everybody. Lord, I just thank you right now. It's going to just... I give myself over to you right now. And I take another nail, Father, and just put it in my coffin right now. That I die. That you be risen in me. That you take my tongue and make it a pen for you as the ready writer. You prepare the hearts of men and the hearts of the women, the children. And you write on the tablets of their heart, your oracles, your standards, your ways. I give to you every aspect of who I am, the good and the bad, nothing held back. And I just thank you. I ask that you take my imperfections, my mistakes, and even the things that I don't quite have together, oh God, and place them in their hearts that they will take them for love, even to the place of saying, let me straighten it out for you to help you, because I don't have it all, Lord. I thank you because you're perfect. Your Holy Spirit is all knowing. I thank you right now. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, Steve. That's a, amen. When he called me yesterday, when Chuck called me yesterday, I, uh, I was actually kind of thrown off <laughs> because I didn't expect anything other than to be able to continue. To, I told my wife to be able to sit and enjoy the good words and the message. And I had gotten to, to a place where I was learning to be comfortable with being a bench warmer and a cheerleader. But God has never made me a cheerleader mm -hmm. to just sit. But if I am gonna cheer, it's cheer and then run to the field and play the game too. In other words, support and at the same time lead. Fight in the fight, but roar. From the back to the front, it doesn't matter. That's who we are. Mm -hmm. and when he when when he spoke with me, I thank God for the pastor. I just 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 bless him, you know. When I say I was thrown off, I uh, I saw it. He texted me and says the Lord, you know, just told me had a that I had a word. And I text right back. <laughs> <laughs> I text back and it says, not that I know of. <laughs> I'm saying it's just as pure as it is in me. And at, I, a word. And I, I, my thought was maybe, is it a word of prophecy to give to somebody? Okay, Lord, you use me that way. Yeah, yeah I, that can be done. I believe it. I'll go with you there. You know, I'm in agreement with them then. But the Lord did not speak to me on that note. And I felt just like, wow, what am I supposed to do here? You know, because I don't, I don't understand the writing of sermons or any of, any of that. I don't understand any of it. When the Lord saved me, he saved me with, I speak to you in open revelation. So whenever you get it out of my mouth, you're getting it directly from him because I know nothing about anybody and I'm getting to know him. I really want y'all to hear that I'm getting to know him. Not I know. I'm learning him as he's raising me. You know? 
And I was in service today, even even to this morning. My wife kept asking me, "Baby, what you got? What you got? What you get? What you get?" I'm like, "I don't know. You want to you want to proofread it?" <laughs> I, I I don't have anything. He's not giving it to me. I guess this is one of the things that this is what he's. This is my walk. This is this is this is who he is. This is what he does with me. I don't. As much as I say I don't prepare, I'm prepared at all times. Whenever he says open your mouth, he speaks. And I believe this is where he's calling us to to right now. He's been speaking to me about fire and baptism, the fire baptism. Holy Spirit's been just pouring over me a thing. And I kept asking the Lord, is this something I'm supposed to be telling people? Because it sounds crazy to tell people certain things, especially when you tell them things about God and what he's saying. To us, we make sense, but he doesn't. So it's easy to tell them, you know, the things we think. But to tell you a thing that God is saying. God said this. This is what the Holy Spirit said. This is the Spirit of the Lord speaking this. The you know, angel came and he ministered this. But to tell you those things, it sounds way out there, way off, off key. So, you know, but then there are those of us that say, you know what? I'm just bold enough to sound foolish for you. I'll be a fool. I don't care. Like it or not, believe me or not, take it to him. Amen. He's the one that's got to judge it anyways, that's right. you know. And so we have to come to that really within ourselves, the resolve of God's going to judge that just as he just is going to be the one to judge us about things. And so um, I'm just going to share the bit that he's given me because I don't believe he's, he, he's and I don't believe there's any one person in here that has got it all about any certain thing, because where we get something and we believe that's the revelation of a thing, then he comes and says, now let me take you to another dimension of the same manner and another way. That's what he's doing with you, taking two dimensions while I was speaking. He's raising you up in a dimensional way, in places where he and you, and there's no, there, there won't be any interference. The only interference is, and he's, this is a clear thing that he says, when he has you, nothing and no one can pluck you out of his hand. Amen. Nothing and no one, no angel, no demon, no boy, no girl, nobody, no husband, no children, nobody. But he also says this, if any man draw back, that means if you draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in you. That's the only stipulation, but we, we, we don't see that because we don't, we don't hear it being told to us, but it's clearly the word of God. And this is something he said, if any man draw back. So, you know, he gives that. But I just want to attempt to just give you what he's given me on fire and baptism of the baptism of fire. Praise God. And, uh, I'm going to go to the book of Acts, second chapter. And y'all take it for love if I leave anything out, I skip over something, I miss something that, you know, that the great theologians don't quite get or didn't hear uh, because I don't know it all and I don't have it all. I, I can give it to you in part as he gives it in part, you know. And that's what makes it so great about the things of God that with part, when you have a part and I have a part, we get a little bit more of the whole. We get closer to the whole as we continue to join together and learn and eat of, eat of the, you know, the master's table together. We begin to have a full feast, you know. Right now, he's just giving us snacks. <laughs> snacks, just getting you acquainted. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I thank God. Let me get that. No, it's okay. Thank you, thank you. The second chapter of Acts. Is everybody there with me? Mm -hmm. And we're going to start with the first verse, and we're going to go down to uh, verse 4. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with all, with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came in a sound mm -hmm. from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. 
and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared upon, appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other languages, speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm going to stop there for a slight minute. If we know, we go in scripture further down into uh, the fourth verse there. Peter speaks of, because all the witnesses there wanted to understand what was going on because uh, to them they were all Galileans. So that's to say, you're all supposed to speak one language. But they were all speaking another language. But individual languages coming out. And uh, Peter began to stand up and tell them, this is uh, the thing that was prophesied uh, from the prophet Joel, you know, and but what he did is he began to speak to them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I believe the Holy Spirit had them close up at that point just to minister on that, but he never spoke about the fire. There was a reason why the fire hadn't been and we talk about a third great awakening. I see the, the two that they, they coincide in a manner, the great awakening and the baptism of fire. What people hide out about shot about shot. Glory to God. <sighs> My God, it just dropped down on me. Whew. <sighs> it just got real. <laughs> 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 My God. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Glory. The baptism of fire and the third great awakening. The shift that's going to shift the world <sighs> hadn't been preached at that time. It couldn't be. But it was introduced. Before God does a thing in its fullness, because this is what he does, he introduces it. Before we began to walk after God, after Christ, the Holy Spirit began to try to get your attention. Let me get your attention. It's something more. We didn't just wake up one day and say, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. He introduced a thing. It's a spirit, it says the Spirit comes upon you. Yeah. That's not the infilling. That's saying I'm trying to get you acquainted. Yeah. So it is so with the fire baptism. To put it on the scene, to say something more is coming after this. There's several different baptisms. I thank God for Sheila. She said something that, that really hit me. She says, there's several different baptisms. And I, as I got in the word, and it began to tell me, says, after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's more infillings. And the Holy Spirit to me says, I had this ministered to you about more infillings. But more so, you just so hungered after seeking me, you don't realize there's another infilling that I'm, I keep pouring over you. I keep pouring a thing over you. All you know is you, you just keep coming after me. That's it. He said, because I'm calling you all into me, not just yeah. around me yeah. or next to me or by me, yeah. but into yeah. me. Yeah. Into a place where it's so how about shata? Where it's the intimacy. <laughs> Do y'all understand why you keep feeling heat? Yeah. It's coming out of the heart of the father. Not just from around his throne seat. That's the water coming down from the throne in the lamb. But the heat's coming out of his heart. Glory to God. When he set that on you, he has a purpose why he's specifically sitting it on certain ones. 
Not that it's not for everybody, but not at this moment. So it's so at that same time. It's coming though. Keep seeking and see. You don't have to believe me. Believe my father. Said tongues of fire, cloven tongues of fire, they sat on them. And after that, they moved in mighty, miraculous ways. Before that, they moved when Jesus told them to move and do a thing. Mm -hmm. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. It's saying it right here. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. There are many filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit does give power to pray things through, to, to move in, ma in, in a manner, because he is God. But the fire was another depth on a different level, a different dimension and a different place that God said, I'm specifically introducing this because now is a time at such a time as this where he's saying, I'm preparing a people that I'm pouring this over that in, watch this, start about Shah. In this next great awakening, we talk about the youth, but the, I believe the father saying the youth of heart in heart is who I'm using, huh? If I were 120 years old, I'm still daddy's little boy. I didn't change one bit to him. It's only to man that I look as an old man. But then he gives me wisdom in those days. And this fire sat on them and they began to move in mighty ways that they had moved before. Signs, miracles, and wonders, mighty signs, miracles, and wonders follow. That's not to say it doesn't happen through the Holy Spirit, but we're talking about on a massive scale now. Christ spoke a thing before the century. He said, these miracles that I do, you'll do these miracles and greater. Why haven't we seen them? If we're filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sat on him, but he moved in them. Then when one with the fire from the heart of God say, go do a thing, it was being done because he, he hey, go, go pray and get this one healed and deliver. Go set this one free about things. When he told his disciples to do a thing because because the power of the fire of God spoke forth, it was able to be done. Then when they came back and they tried on their own, they couldn't. Why not? They were still walking with Christ. They were still believing. But after the fire sat, when he introduced the thing on the scene, and I thank God for it. There was a prophet before we moved that prophesied a thing over me and he says, there are, some, there are a specific few that God has handpicked on this earth from the begin from time, the beginning, until this day, that is specifically handpicked, that he's set this on. And he says, You're one. I didn't understand what he meant by that at that time. All I knew is I was hungered after being inside the heart of God. All I knew is I just wanted to be in him. Mm -hmm. I got to a place that, and I tell my wife sometimes I get broken by it. That when he says, I want your life, he didn't ask me, do I want to be a good Christian? <laughs> he says, I want your life itself so I can live mine through you. And it helped me to realize he is my life and I don't have one past him. Yeah. I had one before, but it wasn't to righteousness and it wasn't, wasn't with a reigning with the Father in the holy presence of his son, Christ, Jesus. <sighs> go somewhere else with this, my Lord. We can go to Exodus because there's something that happened here that the Lord needs to pour it out. This is something I was going to share with you, Justin, but I'm going to share it openly. I believe the Holy Spirit said, share this openly. Exodus, third chapter. 
And it's something that happened here that we don't even realize what happened. But when you see it, really sit on it for a moment and, and when you get some time and just, because if you were here that day and you received that day of this thing, that's because you're a partaker of it. And he specifically and purposely, his purpose, not ours, his, had you here for that. One through six says, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. So now he wants to look at it. He wants to look and see what, what, what is this? You know, what is this? Okay. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here, where is she? Am I? Thank you. And he said, draw nigh hither, put off the shoes of thy feet. For the place where I stand is holy ground. I stopped there for a moment because I know the Lord had me take my shoes off pretty regular. I've been doing this. I can be home meditating on the Lord. He said, take your shoes off. You don't get before me with your shoes on. I get a tremble in my spirit, man, because I'm like, I'm sorry, daddy. I know better than that. You know, just the thought of that, it's not even a place where you got to be in the services wherever your mind, whenever and wherever your mind is, when it's on the Father. That's service. You're right there before him then. You're in the midst of service, in the midst huh? of pureness and holiness. Hmm. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. For he was afraid to look upon God. The Lord had me go there for a purpose and a reason. And I don't know why I just, he just showed that to me. Was it this morning, babe, I told you that? He showed me that this morning. Still didn't even have a word to give. I thought this was just something. He just giving me a little bit more of what this was. And he began to show me this. He says, no, I'm showing you this for a purpose. Two Sundays ago. Correct me if I'm out of, out of the way there, Justin, because I love him. I love you all. That is my buddy. <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> oh, we were sitting over here together. He chose to sit with me that Sunday, which was beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful to me because it let me know he really loves me. To want to be able to just, you know, it's, it's one thing to, to say I love you. It's another thing to take time up with you to yeah. show you I love you. Yeah. And when he sat there, it just meant so much to me. You know, my wife was upstairs and, hey, I got somebody to sit with. Mm -hmm. I have a brother huh, that's sitting with me and it's okay. <laughs> and the heat of God fell in here so. And if you all can recall some of the things that were being mentioned and said, because this is what the Lord was showing me this for. The Holy Spirit began to show me the heat of God falling in here. And his face came down and sat in the place. Does anybody remember this? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit had that prophesied out. The, the face of God came and sat in the place. And then the Holy Spirit says, now tell them. And I'll, he says, with Maranatha? Was it Maranatha? Yeah. Which one? 
Hannah. It was Hannah. The Holy Spirit said, you got mighty hot. And there were others. But he said specifically, ask her. Put, he says, tell her and then ask her so she can acknowledge that thing. And she said, yes, but the God said there were many others that it got so hot in here because the face of God sat in here. It wasn't, those, it wasn't by circumstance that we were all here for this to happen. Each individual one God has handpicked for this purpose in this time. There is an outpouring coming that is so mighty, so on the scene, that is about to be released, yes. that the world will not know what to do, won't know how to act, and will not be able to contain the move of God that is about to catch a fire and a blaze. No wonder he has called the young man a coal because he has to set a blaze of fire. Huh? My God, my God, I keep hearing him say, watch what I do, watch what I do. Watch. Hmm. Some think it's a setup. He says, I'm doing it before your very eyes. This isn't a setup. Watch me. My God. When he sat his face and it got so hot. I said, Lord, we left. I'm thinking, what was this about? He began to talk to me and even in my thought process. Began to say, I, 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 you know, my God is a God of thoughts, too. He will take your thoughts and answer them before you can think them good. Right. <laughs> yeah. say, I didn't quite get that. Yeah, I know, but I got you. <laughs> Sometimes you'll check it. Hey, get that right. Yeah. Throw that one out. Yeah. That's not going to lead to anything good now. <laughs> and other times, don't just think it, act on it because I'm finna bless it. Hmm? Yes. And when he showed me this, I said, Lord, well, how is this? What he was showing me is when he sat his face in here, the depth of what he did is because the outpouring, we're on the cuff of this happening now. Yeah. The church is about to go to this place called not just being being called the church but the movement of what the church is and the lively stones being built up, on, being yeah. set in place. Yes. He's perfectly hand picking his stones, not bricks because they're all one shape. That's right. That's right. Stones that he's scrubbing the edges and roughing, and getting them straight and smoothing out the way he wants, setting them in place and setting them where he needs them to be. Stones, yes. lively stones. God doesn't deal with bricks. No, For what? That's right. He tear them down. Come on. Ask, ask those that built the tower what he do with their bricks. And, can, and sit confusion. But stones, he speak to them. And allow his water to run over them. You never went to a river and saw a whole bunch of bricks. You see stones, that water just running over. And the, and the water is smoothing them over. Come on, sister, say it. The water, the river of living water smooths them over. It's the sandpaper. And that's something. We think we got to go get something rough. He said, no, let me show you really how you do this. I'm so majestical and, and mystic. I'll show you the true thing. For all the witches out there, watch my God. <laughs> watch my God. You say poof be gone, I say poof is on. You preach it. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Bless you. Bless you. My God, my God, my God. I began to look at fire and said, Lord, okay, fire. Fire. You say it's fire. 
and I was remi reminded of the first time when God made the earth, he moved the water back. He says he pulled the water back and there came land. But he saw that what he did, he didn't like what he saw in that. Mm -hmm. Error came in that through sin. So he destroyed it by water. Yeah. I says, okay, Father, what is that by water? And he said, and the word said, but it'll be fire next time. It won't be water. That's right. It'll be fire. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you the luxury of having a taste. The man in hell wanted a sip of water on his tongue, just a finger touch. He said, I ain't giving him that. So it won't be about water anymore. Mm -hmm. We can see as much water as we want to rain. That's simply the spirit of God in an area washing through a thing, washing through an area, washing through a person. Because there's something that he's washing out. For the church to raise up again to pray against the thing. He said, now I'm going to move now to show that I, I've heard you. Yes. When you see torrential rain going in a place and just tearing it down, storms going, tearing down. God said, I'm sending things. Satan ain't sending a storm. We can pray them, pray them away because it's not to pray it storm away. We're praying that God move on, our, on the behalf of the people there. And God says, now that you pray, then I'll do it a different way. Mm -hmm. Not the fact that you actually prayed and now the storm's scared of you. <laughs> we don't have that power. He said, okay, I'll move another way because he's God. He can always do that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And so he began, I said, well, Lord, what is fire? He said, fire is purifying. Yes. Yes. Fire is burning off the chaff. Because yes. when, when they set gold in a fire, they burn it. Yeah. To melt it down, they burn, burn, and they scrape the top. Mm -hmm. Throw that in the, that's drop, just throw it away. Fire consecrating, separating, yeah. you see. And when God calls us, he does desire us to want to go to that depth, to go in him. But there are those, we get filled with the Holy Spirit and to us, we're there. But to him, he's saying, there's always another place in me. Yeah. There's always more. There's always more, yes. you know. Some journeys have been cut short because they feel they're there and they won't go any further in their ministry mm -hmm. because they're there now. And he said, well, there's no more use of you. Come on home. Yeah. Yeah. Next, yeah. who wants yeah. me to be in me? Yeah. Next, yeah. who wants to be in me? Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. <laughs> that is a prolonger of life, if any. Yeah. Not so much so just to stay in this realm because it's great. But because there's so many other souls. See, when we get the concept of why then is the fire, because there's so many others that are in need huh, of a life change, a shift and change for their soul to be saved. Yes. That he needs you and I to hunger after the fire to come. And so when I saw this sit down, I said, Lord, well, what was this about? He's saying, this is what I'm sending. This is what I'm doing. The crowning, when he says, I'm crowning the, the apostle and the wife of a thing and pouring a fire over them. It's because, watch this, there's going to come a time where that fire is released in its corporate manner. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't then, and it isn't now in the corporate manner so much, but it's coming to a place because there are those even today that are handpicked that, are, that walk in this fire. That, you ever get around a person and you say, I feel heat from you? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. This morning I woke up this morning out of I was sleeping when, last night or this morning, babe. I know I was asleep. And I was asleep and I was I felt good in my sleep. And I, Now the crazy thing is I'm gonna say this so y'all to hear this. I'm a truck driver that stay awake quite often. I'm a heavy man and I, my throat closes up. She said I stop breathing in my sleep a lot. That's called sleep apnea. I sleep with the breather on at times. And so I'm asleep and I'm like, and I jumped up to get ready to jump out of bed and run through the house. And she goes, you all right? So I smell smoke, I smell smoke, I smell smoke. She goes, you were asleep. <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. And she asked me, uh, I'm not quite sure what the question was, but she said, was it God or was it something with God? I said, yeah, I believe it was God. I said, but I saw God, but I smelled smoke. Mm -hmm. I could, didn't even put the two together until just talking. I, 
I was so blown by it, I called my pastor. I said, I told him about it, but it hit me. That's because it's the fire that you're smelling. It wasn't your house burning up. But this is a place he wants us to go and be daring enough to go there, to walk in the fire. The fire, the fire will bring that dunamis power and manifestations of signs, miracles, and wonders. That's what it's set up to do, to be poured out in a deeper manner. That thing that Christ spoke when he said this, when he came out of the mouth of the lamb, the fire burning himself, when it came out of him, he spoke a thing for a purpose. He said, these miracles you'll do and greater because that, that is to come. That is a shift and a movement because they're going to come a day where we can't afford to go to hospitals or you're going to have to fast for quite a few days before you can get a morsel of food. It may not be in our day and time, but what about our children or our children's children or our so on? If we can't look and think, I want their souls to be saved. And not only that, but them at peace in Christ, yes. even in their day yes. doing turmoil. Amen. Amen. He's the same God then. Yes. Didn't he cover the Israelites yes. when he brought them out yes. out of Egypt? He was the same God when he fell on fell his fire behind them. He didn't sit it on them because he could have burned them then. But he sat it behind them, covering them then. In the midst of their turmoil. Allowed them to go through some things. But he said, I'll cover them anyways because I love them. So we have to look at that same manner and ask the Lord, what is this about? The fire baptism. John said it best. He said, I baptize with water, water a baptism of repentance. That means... Lord, I want to be saved. He says, okay, well, you go down in the water. Now, from here back, you're clean. <laughs> Not here up. <laughs> from here back, you're clean. Yeah. That slate's clean. Now what you going to do? He says, now there's one going to come after that. <laughs> we'll baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Holy Spirit told me, that's not the same baptism. Many have put that in one baptism. Yeah. It's not. That's right. It's not. That's why the Holy Spirit is spoken of so greatly around the world, but not the fire. That's right. That's right. Thank you. And fire. And fire. Yeah. There was a separation there when John spoke a thing. Yeah. So, it is, so we need to look at that. Though they're the self-same God and moving through Jesus Christ, the self-same Christ, Jesus, Son of God, he and he, the Father and the Spirit are one. So it's so there's a fire because he is the fire. Mm -hmm. But he said, I'm coming in a greater manner when I bring this on you. Amen. Hmm? This, this greater manner comes with a deeper cry out, out of us. Not because we, you're just somebody or you deserved it. None of us deserve a thing but hell. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Who says somebody did something so perfect that God is going to automatically place you there? Satan found out that ain't true. <laughs> and he was already up there. This is a matter of your seeking. There are those that. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, tell y'all this, plain and simple. When you look at a person and you see them and they walk in a manner that you feel is so deep, so vast, so out there, so mighty, so anointed. Don't be wild by it because he's calling you with the same call. Amen. The same Holy Spirit that is in yes. them is yes. the same Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. It's a matter of your seeking to go into the Father yes. to receive that yes. depth yourself. Yes. And also do not get upset, jealous, or bitter because they walk in a different manner because he did not make not one of us the same. Yes. He will not save a people with everybody being the same. That be the case, we won't be lively stones, we'll be bricks. <laughs> when I was in the military, they taught us about fires and building fires. Not one time did they tell us to put bricks in the fire. But what they did tell us to do, though, is find a nice stone, get you a, bottle, a thing of water, heat the stone up, set it in, and it'll, clear, it'll purify that water because it'll get, bring it to a good boil. Mm -hmm. It'll help it bring it to a good boil. It keeps the heat in there. And you get that stone hot. It didn't say a brick because a brick all breaks apart and sands it up and mucks it up. 
But a stone, it only gets smoothed out and cleaned up. That's it. Polished. And that's what he's doing. That's what the refining is. When you pull gold out and you set it to the side of that that's been ran through, it shines, it's polished. And that's what he's doing, polishing us. And he's saying, I just want you to cry out. Desire more. Come after me. It, the scripture says, come after me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Why labor if you're not going to want the fullness of who he is? Mm -hmm. Why want just a peace? When I hear people say, I want to get into heaven, I used to hear these loose terms. I want to just get into heaven. If I can just sweep the streets, you're on the way to hell. I, I hear, I'm here to tell you, because there's nothing dirty in heaven. Right. Just something simple so they can get it. Mm -hmm. Webcast, us, me, myself. If you want to make heaven just to sweep the streets, just to get inside the gate, just for that purpose alone, hmm, and you're living that loose, you're on your way to hell because yeah. you've been deceived. That's right, that's right. There's absolutely no dirt <laughs> and transparent gold <laughs> where I can see through it. Good. This is gold that's been burned in the fire. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. These are his servants. <laughs> has been burned in the fire. He can see through them. The gold. He said the streets of paved gold are like transparent glass. The servants, he's looking down, looking through them. The ones that have been burnt. I'm looking down and I'm looking at more that's crying out for me. So much so that when he calls down into us, what we hear bellowed out a lot of times, we think it's so mighty. And so wonderful, and let me get near it, let me feel it, let me, I want to I wanna experience that. But it's him himself calling back unto himself. He didn't hear me. <laughs> this filthy tongue, they don't have anything to give him. But when he calls out unto himself, oh, it's pure. It's been burnt, it's righteous, and it smells like smoke. It goes before his nostrils, and he loves that smell. That's why some can't resist y'all. When they come around you, it's like you're magnetic. The Spirit of God draws. Fire. You ever notice whenever you see a fire, you seem to want to go see what's going on? That's right. That's right. When we really should be running from a fire at times? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the Spirit of God does through the fire baptism? It draws. Yes. <laughs> I found that many people that are filled with the Holy Spirit that I can understand say, I don't know if I want to be around this person because of the way they act. But you find somebody that's been washed and baptized by fire for some odd reason, Lord, help me to get in a place where I want to be around them because they have something to deposit on me because I got the first part of it. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm just acting up personally. Yeah, there you go. But the fire is going to tell person to get back. Get out of the way, because there's something more here. That's good. Yes. Person himself, they're the same one. I just use person because that's some, that's a, that was an image of who I was back then. That's mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Yeah, let me talk to person. And be, man, he's so, he's so funny. No, no, forget funny now. Now it's time to get real about who you are and who God is desiring to make you to be yes. in him and through his son. The fire's on the music. That guitar strings be burning with smoke. And the revelation, you think you're just singing things and things of God. You think you're singing oracles unto the Father. Prophetic oracles that are going out. And I would behoove everybody in here to grab hold of the things of God that he's pouring out when, he's, when they're being released. And the midst of the time or, or open portal is there is because the Holy Spirit has fell down like a fire in here. He says he sent fire, God sent a fire from his throne right out of his heart and opened the atmosphere. He says that that time when you hear enter in, put every single thing about you before him. Yes. You're good, you're bad, you're ugly. That thing hidden from, from the wife, 
from the friend, put that before him and watch what he do with it. So he says he's, he's trying to burn up, burn mess up. He wants to purify every aspect of us. He take my good and purify it because it's still trash. That's right. That's right. That's good. It's still just as. What we call good is nowhere near what he looks at. He looks at us. You ain't begun yet. But I'll take you anyways and use you. Hmm. <laughs> my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. We're coming up on something and an event and a happening that's about to happen. And we're so blessed. I am my wife. I'm so blessed to be able to be here coming out of Florida to be here for what God is doing. Uh, my pastor and apostle Chuck, he pointed something out to me that I had really never gave any thought to. I, I knew it, but I really never gave it any thought to it. In 2008, there was a great awakening. I mean, a great um, uh, 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 outpouring of uh, Lakeland outpouring revival there that went on for quite some time. The Lord had just moved me to being there at that church and my wife, I guess it was just that came there that year, the year after, I'm not sure. But uh, and we hadn't known each other at that time. And I came from a Baptist community, but I sat in an apostolic community for two years and I asked the Lord, can I join this place where I was sitting at? He said, I didn't tell you to join them, but I said, be there. So I would get off of work and get to church when he said, be the church and leave. The people there thought I was a member, but the Lord wouldn't allow me to be a member there. So he sent me to this other place called Ignited. When, we got, when I got to Ignited in 2007 for a solid year, doing the praise and worship. Y'all get nothing now compared to what the Holy Spirit was doing then. He gave y'all the mom. I don't know what that's about, but I was introduced to the door three times to be uh, at least this is the way they say, it says the pastor said, we don't do this here or you're going to have to leave. We're going to have to put you out if you keep doing this. In other words, they, were, they had told me three different times they were going to put me out of that church, but the Holy Spirit will be bellowing out send your fire to burn the atmosphere yeah. huh? to catch a blaze this fire, this place huh? on hearts minds souls and spirits send your fire a fire of revival to burn this place send your fire for a solid year the holy spirit had me just crying this out and i could not stop i tried to one time <laughs> and i said lord i ain't saying nothing else i'm tired of these people coming at me like this <laughs> i tried to shut my mouth i went home and I sat down and said, no, I said anything else. The Lord dealt with me. I got back to church and that Sunday, I'm going to be strong enough to keep my mouth shut because, you know, they're going to put me out if I get up again. Glory! Lord, send your fire! Da, 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 da. And I re distinctly remember saying, now, I know I'm supposed to shut up. I'm telling the Holy Spirit, I call myself saying this to me, but I know I'm speaking to the Holy Spirit. Kind of like, let me ease this into your ear. <laughs> Don't speak into mind. Let me tell you what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> and I heard Holy Spirit say, just as plain, who told you to shut your mouth? Mm -hmm. So what if they put you out? The deposit is made. I'll just take you and use you elsewhere. After that, psh, no problem. I, you weren't gonna check me like that a second time. Yeah. You talking about the fear of God hit me when he did that? I broke and began to repent. Father, forgive me, forgive me. And from that point on, just cried out. 2008, the revival just broke out. I never understood going to a place where they were quiet and it's supposed to be apostolic. It was, when I say quiet, I'm talking Catholic quiet. quiet. Mm. But the preaching was awesome. So I'm trying to understand what's going on here. 
You're like, Lord, what is this? I just came from somewhere where they're on fire. Why would you bring me here for this? But the whole year, I'm still crying out. I knew not to go back because he didn't tell me to go back to where I just came from. I couldn't join there anyways if I went there anyways. And that outpouring came from Ignited. Then there came a time near the end of that. Was it the end or after? Was it after that? The pastor had called me up to ask what had happened. After the outpouring, because some things came about, well, we all know with man, we tend to tamper with things or, or get in some trouble where it tends to bring an end to things. But God wasn't through yet. And uh, I had been just crying. I was talking to the Lord about it and whatever he said to do. And he had called me up and says, I just want you to come on, Charles, come and tell him what happened. There was a night that, that beautiful things happened. And the Lord said to tell him, I told him, says, well, ignited has been ignited. And I turned to walk away as if I'm ready to go sit down. And the Holy Spirit says, now you tell, turn and tell him it is on. And I turned back and I said, Pastor Stephen, I hear the Holy Spirit told me to tell you it is on. And he went to his face. And he tried to get up. He had a chair and he tried to get up and he got near his knee and went boom back to his face. Because God wasn't finished. People were coming from all over the world still trying to be incorporated with this revival to take something back home. That Sunday, he got in the pulpit and he began, to, I don't believe he did it consciously knowing what he was doing, but he started saying, Charles, what did he say? His own, his own. And it hit me in my spirit, that wasn't a joking matter. That was purely God from the throne seat said to tell you that, that he did a thing. But if you, we, we can miss it mm -hmm. just like that, taking God's word clear word for a joke or not seeing that it was actually him. Yes. I'm not here to be a thug and speak some slang words to you. Mm -hmm. And if they come out slang, it's because God said it just like that so you have an understanding of how serious it is. Because some of us get a little scared about the ghetto, but we know it's serious. Mm -hmm. If he got to go to that place of getting ghetto with you, know something's really real. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All this pertains to the fire because of this. What the pastor pointed out is God sent you out of a place with revival. The place was called Ignited. That's the name of the church. Ignited. To send us here. To unveiled. To another place that's being ignited. Yes. Where another revival is about to come on the scene mightily. It's starting here so much so that when he so showed me that, he spoke a thing. This morning, God showed me, I sat my face in here. For this purpose, yeah. because where I am sitting on the scene, this I put out as the sparks. Huh? This is my God, I will shy. I tell you, I tell you this day. As a voice of one that speaks forward the oracles of God that unveiled is a key pressure point of God yes. and it will outpour signs, miracles and wonders yes. by the fire baptism of God. Yes. It will be a place of refuge where they're, they're going to run to that's why I thank you for that. You said it's not ha so much is not happening with so many people that impact. It can't be right now because he's establishing you, you, and especially you right now. Amen. Amen. He's establishing yes. forerunners. Yes. Somebody has to run forward. Somebody has to say, I will. Yes, Lord. Yes. He's looking for yes. And he's found the people. 
I heard that this morning. He says, I found the people that says yes. So I'll establish this place. Hmm? On this place, I'll call once again. On this rock, I'll build my church. I declare this this day. On this rock. She always building his church. We don't even, we have just a glimpse, and this is just a glimpse of what this fire is and what it's doing and what it's gonna do, but there's so much more that he's gonna pour because he is, he is revelation everlasting. <laughs> See, I'll be revealing things to you throughout eternity. He is revelation everlasting. Well, when I think it's this, Lord, this is what this is. He says, okay, now that you got it that way and you walked into this way, now let me take it to this, to this next level. Let's get this group of people now through this, on this note. But he is God. He's God. What do you say? I hear those people say, because I am a consuming fire. Yes. If I had poured it out back then, everything would have been over. Yeah. It had to wait. Yeah. Hmm? I wanted to, in, I introduced it to bring it on the scene. Huh? They didn't understand that's what that was, but they knew what the Holy Spirit was. Yeah. And they moved by power because they believed and they walked after Christ. Now and so he's saying, now I want to give it to you in revelation openly and allow you to move in it. Move in me, huh? Move, have your moving And move by my spirit. Yes. We are the established fingers and hands of God yes. and movement and power in this realm. Amen. Go after the fire with everything in you. Hunger after the fire with everything in you. And don't ever get to a place where it's okay, I'm there now. When you do, ask the Father to break you again. Because there's no stopping place in Him. There's absolutely no place where He says, okay, you got it, that's enough. You don't have to go any further. That's all I need you to do and that's it. You've done all the work and all the souls are saved behind you. you at that point in time, you're saying, come on, let me get you out the way. Come on up here and hang out. Next. There's some of us in here that are gonna walk in signs some are going to walk in miracles. Some are going to walk and be mighty wonders and be able to speak the wonders, speak the oracles of God in a manner that when they're seen. And I'm not talking about just to each other. This coming to a time now where God's about to take this thing out there and draw them in. Amen. Yes. 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 So let's not think it's just so I can have something. Mm -hmm. There's not one ounce of who I am that thinks, oh, I'm somebody. To be honest, I weep because sometimes I think, Lord, I ain't got this right yet. Help me. Help me. My wife, sometimes I can see it in her. She just, her love for me is so beautiful that I can see sometimes. I see sometimes she almost weeps in her heart to the Father for me because she can see how broken I get. And it's not I'm being broken in the sense of, oh, I'm broken for Lord, but how broken I am because I don't, I know, Lord, I ain't got this together. I'm, I'm a clown, I mess up, I laugh, I joke, I, I, I t pick with her all the time. I'm a kid, to be honest, I am the biggest kid you can find. <laughs> but that's what God wants. That's right. Daddy wants that's children, right. yes. not adults. He don't have any of them. <laughs> Daddy has not one adult. That's right. <laughs> we talking about the elders, huh? Around the throne. They're still children. They ain't adults. They're just full of wisdom. Godly wisdom from right there at the throne. 
been poured over them, glory been poured over them, but their children, the fire sitting on them, but their children. When you say suffer the children, not huh? Suffer not the children. I'm one of them. Don't get in my way. I'll run through you. I'm getting to daddy. Yeah, I ain't gonna feel so good with 300 pounds coming at you. <laughs> I mean, clearly, I will run through you if you get in my way of daddy. <laughs> really, don't get in my way of getting before the father. Because we got an issue. If he's saying, get up here in this pool where the fire is burning, hey, you better move, <laughs> step aside, or realize I'm behind you or something. Because we both end up here. You didn't take one step, but you're here with me. There's going to come a time where the river of fire will be pouring in here. This is the way he's sitting this thing now. It's got to. For him to sit his face in the plate. This, he did this in Exodus. The book after Genesis. Mm -hmm. The book after the beginning. Mm -hmm. Where he sat his face down in a fire. Mm -hmm. That's why I say ponder that thing. Sit on it. Meditate on it. That's, you were here for a purpose for that to happen specifically to you. He's not tearing off of things and bringing you into new things for no reason. And at the same time, allowing the heat of God to rest on you. Oh, there's purpose in every one of you. His purpose has purposed you. And if any of you all have anything that you want to share with me about anything at any time, pull me to the side. Because I'm willing to search it out with you. You know, if you if you know something that I don't help me. Let's not be so tight about things about who I am. I'm this and I'm I, I, I'm nobody special. Not in the sense of saying that I got something that if I keep it for me, then that makes me the only one with it. You know how many people that God got that can open his mouth he, and the Holy Spirit himself speaks those things if he wants to. He just so happened to say, I'll choose, I'll use you. Hmm? <laughs> See, when God said he can say it with attitude, he's going, yeah, I, 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 I'll choose you. Yeah, come on. But he says it with love. You know what? I take your flaws and I love your flaws. Your perfections, I don't care nothing for them. But your flaws, <laughs> that's, right. that's what got you to where you are now. Because you realize you were imperfect. Yes. Yes. Hmm? I'm going to put all of that in this fire. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to burn it. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. All of that. Your perfections and your imperfections. We think about, I got this all together, so let me just get this together. No, he said, no, give all of that to me. Everything, your good and your bad, your perfections, your imperfections, your thoughts, your wants, your needs, your desires. Because when it all boils down, when I finish burning up, you, burning you up, and I scrape off the top of you, huh? What I'm going to pull out is what my purpose for you is. That's, right. <laughs> That's what's left. Yes. When I finish burning you, It'll be my purpose. When I dust you off stone, the shine that you'll have won't be one that you had before because you were dusty, remember? Now I'm dusting you. Now you'll be a lively stone to shine. I love God for all that he's doing, but even greater than just loving him, he loves me. Hmm. Hey, that's something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he loves you. He loves you. And he loves you. And if there's anybody that can't get over any aspect of themselves, ask the Father to burn it. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, give yourself just a few days. When I say ask him to burn it, be for real with it. Give yourself just a few days. You don't even have to go that long. But watch and see, it's gone. It's done. The thought of it. Like, wait, what, what, what was that at? What, 
Now, I knew it was something I used to feel about myself or where I thought of. You can't even get to it anymore because the fire, it doesn't allow it to be there anymore. It consumes it. He says, I'm a consuming. It consumes it. You all be blessed. This is what the Lord gave me. At times, I think it's going to be hardcore preaching. I don't know. I told him. <laughs> I told him, I know how to preach to the unsaved. So the Lord has given me a man, manner to go out and preach to, the, 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 to evangelize with and, and, and minister to the homeless and all. But when we, you preach to the, the saved folk, I don't know. All I know is let the Lord do it. Father, I just thank you right now for any manner of thing that is given, for your revelation, your open revelation that you poured out. Lord God, I thank you for allowing, allowing my pastor's wife to sit in with us for a while because it's special to me, just supporting him. I thank you for the support here of my brothers and sisters. They're sitting in the midst, Father, whether I got it right or wrong about any aspect, but they just sat and just ate with me at your table. Yes. I thank you for your fire. Yes. I thank you for what you're, well, Father God, what you're introducing and what you're about to do, this, this manner of pouring out you're doing, the call that you have on the life, the mandate that is set before us. I thank you for the webcast, those that, Father God, that will review this, that they don't review it for, Father God, for criticism. But if they do, Father God, praise God and bless them too. And draw them, oh God, even in criticism, that they be drawed. Yes. Yes. Mm. I thank you for the revelation that you're going to be bringing, Father God, in the days to come to many yes. about a thing, oh God, to search it out. To seek the hunger for fire, for more, for a deeper calling, your deeper walking, your deeper life, a deeper manner of living and thinking and breathing and eating. Yes. A deeper manner of rep revelation that you're bringing out on the scene now. A deeper manner of, Father God, of signs, miracles and wonders to be set forth and released in this realm that your Holy Spirit will move in mightily that you're going to do. That is going to happen. Just honor you right now. And Lord God, I just release even in me, Father God, what you've given unto me, Father God. The depth of just the manner of putting my mind just on the inkling of you. Whew, my spirit is moved. My heart breaks. And my shakura da ah. My life is flooded by you. Your essence. Your majesty, your glory. Not that you will share it with the man, but you sit it down and rest it upon us that you be seen. So I even release that, Father God, that any manner when they put their mind on you, that they're able to go right before your throne at that very second. Not that it'd be a hard press anymore, but it'd be, Father God, just accessible before they can blink their eye. They're before you about a thing, and the matter is before you. I release dreams, oh God, of heavenly realms. Whew. Visions and dreams I release right now. Whew. With clarification and revelation. I ask that you just break every mindset, oh God, that has been set against you and against the kingdom, oh God. Any hindrances that's been with us, oh God, about anything, that it be broken off right now. Oh God, I thank you right now for your spirit of peace that's in this house, even with the children. I thank you right now. Oh, you have moved mightily this day, Father. Your fire sits in this place and it's resting, it's warm. I feel your warmth all around right now. 
the coolness of your breath and the heat of your heart rest in here. Shanda de Nabosha. In the name of your holy son, Yahshua, my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen, Pastor. Amen.